Questions for our two students, and it has to deal with the response of your university presidents. We're going to talk today about what the federal government should do, but I would contend that there's a responsibility by university presidents, the Board of Regents, uh, whoever has authority and responsibility uh, for these universities. And I want to compliment our former colleague and now President University of Florida, Ben Sass. This is what Senator Sass, now President Sass, said. But I also want to be clear about this. We will protect our Jewish students from violence, he wrote. If anti-Israel protests come, we will absolutely be ready to act if anyone dares to escalate beyond peaceful protest. Speech is protected, violence and vandalism are not. So for our two students, what has been the response by your university president and people in authority to say, yes, uh, peaceful protests are allowed, but violence and threatening people um, is, is not. You know, Ellie, would you go first, please? Um, thank you, Senator. I, I'll, I guess what I would say is, is that before, prior to last week, specifically with Columbia, where they created this anti-Semitism task force and they released a, a much stronger message, we had three weeks of essentially silence, right? Whatever message they sent out was very light. They were constantly equivocating between suffering, and, but more or less science between what was going on on the ground by students. So specifically, let's talk about hate speech for a second. Yeah, si silence is very, very deafening at times. So there was minimal response. M right. But leadership and, and, could have made a difference and given you some, made you feel safer. Yeah, and I think that enabled the hate speech, and which is what eventually led to actual exactly. physical violence. Okay, Ms. Steinberg. The lack of moral clarity that has come out of the Stanford administration has been appalling, especially when past presidential administrations at Stanford have been extremely quick to respond to geopolitical events as they emerge. I think that the Stanford uh, interim president and provost are not pro-Hamas. I think they disagree with the protesters, and I think that the protesters should be able to protest. But I think that because the ideology of diversity, equity, and inclusion that does not include Jews. Uh, some of my um, other speakers up here can sort of elaborate more on that, how the diversity, equity, and inclusion bureaucracy that's supposed to protect minority students explicitly so, excludes Jews. So, so the response so from your administration has been lacking? It's been deafening. Been deafening, okay. But if, if it had been some other group that they were uh, acting against, you know, based upon their sexual preferences, their sexual identity, you know, people from, from Kansas were, were there. What, what would the administration have done? I can talk about a few incidents um, at Stanford where we received emails after uh, what could be construed as nooses were found. One of them was an abandoned tire swing. Another one, I believe, was the remnants of a Halloween or Christmas decoration. But after these were found, the university was very quick to issue statements about anti-racism and the importance of combating it actively. And that wasn't even when students were chanting uh, for the genocide of six million Jews. The anecdote I gave earlier about a peer of mine at Stanford not knowing where Israel is but chanting for its destruction was not to say that she didn't know what was going on. And she doesn't, but she still knows enough to chant about Israel's destruction. Right. Okay. Thank you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, as students, do you feel like that you have the ability to contact the Office of Civil Rights? Is there some type of a mass room movement by, by Jewish students across the nation reaching out to the civil rights folks and saying we've got a problem here? I can say for Columbia, we have not done that. It, it might be to our fault, but we're not really knowledgeable about that, and, and we're unsure about the effectiveness of it. Okay. I'm going to uh, go to Mr. Marcus, I think, to start with. We didn't just wake up one day and we were here. Students just all of a sudden don't start hating Israel. They've been taught this, that there is something going on in our college campuses across the nation that set the stage for these type of riots to occur. What what? What in the world is being taught at our universities to, to, hate, to hate Israel? Where did this come from? I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm baffled, I'm stunned that this has occurred across the nation. 
Senator Marshall, I couldn't agree more. This is not a situation in which we just wake up and it happens to be the fact that uh, students are saying and doing uh, what they're doing. It has taken many years and considerable fortune to get to this point. Start at the very beginning. With fortune. Tell me about the fortune part of this, please. Uh, sure. Um, uh, start with the faculty. Um, it's not a matter of does a professor have a particular view. It's a matter of think about the departments of, let's say, engineering, chemistry, math, biology we could have had if we did not have to move slots into um, essentially uh, identity politics uh, positions. Uh, oh, I see the water bottle uh, gavels coming down. Uh, thank, thank you. I yield back.